Hello my friends, welcome again on my video channel. Today we will continue our work on the Drake PS7 TR7 combo, do some tests and look for the fault which still persists. I have checked the transceiver for longer periods, no problem, so I will do as a last step, set the overcurrent limit and the voltage I will measure, the voltage is easy. But the current to measure is a little bit more difficult. This is the output, this loop here, this red wire, there's a current flowing. I will use a clamp meter to measure the current and I will add some additional current in the range of 5 or 10 amps to the transceiver. I use the transceiver as a load of course and add some amps with a variable electronic load and then set the uh, overcurrent protection to an appropriate level. The uh, schematic here says 25 amps. Okay, I think a setting of the overcurrent of uh, a little bit above 30 amps would be okay. As overcurrent protection, I didn't find any really level where it should be set to, but I think 30 amps is okay. Now I will start to uh, make it uh, possible to measure the current with a clamp. I will open this uh, screw, fold this. A red wire out and then I can add such a clamp meter to measure the, the DC current. Here we have the test setup. The loop is now accessible. Here I will connect another load, the electronic load from plus pole. Here is a good location for our connection. And here is the minus pole, it's at the electrolytic cap. Here is a big screw. I couldn't get a ground connection, a good ground connection here in this region without causing a short. And of course I have to feed now this wire also through the clamp. So I will go this one and then through this one. Oops. This way, so both <coughs> wires are fed through the clamp. Of course I have to look for the polarity. That's okay. Here is plus, minus, plus, minus. And this is also the, the right orientation. And now I will switch it on and then feed in the, the clamp meter. And here we have the receive current 2.06 amps. When I switch on the electronic load, one additional amp. Then we have three. The color changes when a certain current limit is, uh, is reached. 3.1, 2.1, when I increase this. Enter 2 amp more additional amps. Now I will key the transceiver. 6 amp. Increase the output power 14 amp. Hope you can see it. One moment. I will move the camera. Twenty seven amp, uh -huh. we have hundred forty watt, twenty seven amps. One amp more, twenty eight. Twenty-nine, thirty amps, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty. That's it. Thirty-three amp. We have seen the overcurrent tripped. I think that's okay. Thirty-three amp. We do not need more than thirty-three amp. Let me go down with the current and repeat it again. Twenty-seven amps. By the way, for for 100 watt, the required current is 24 amps. That's 100 watt now. I increase 240 watts, 140 watts. Then I switch on the load. And 
always too foolish. 31, 32, that's it. I think that's a good setting, 32 amps. And now I thought I'm ready and what happened? Same -ish. again. Hmm. So let's check some other components in the output we have here an electrolytic capacitor 2100 microfarad 25 volt it is a the block high frequency maybe this crowbar uh, is tripped this is a Cena diode 16 volt 100 uh, 1 watt 16 volt 1 watt 100 ohms to ground when the voltage is beyond 16 17 volt then the thyristor is tripped Maybe there's a high frequency on it when I transmit in uh, SSB due to the variation of the output. In CW uh, I had no problems, only in SSB. This could be an indication that we have to look for the capacitor. This electrolytic cap is located, it's located here, can be unscrewed. So first I will check it. Could be a problem uh, with the ESR, not with the capacity. But when the ESR is too high, then this capacitor here does not block high frequency. The tester says uh, 2300 microfarad ESR 0 0.08 ohms. This is a very good value. So I'm quite sure it's okay. But I check it with my other capacitor meter. And 120 hertz I'm measuring. 2000 microfarads quality of 7 uh, okay i have here a new capacitor same capacity at 120 hertz it has 2.7 millifarad quality is factor 18 and at 1 kilohertz it still has a quality of 2.1 and i will measure the esr with the other uh, capacitor meter We can see here the values are a little bit better. TSR is a little bit less, 0 0.05. The loss and the capacity is 2,200. So I will swap this capacitor. This is only 24 volt. This one has 40 volt, as I've seen. So I take out this capacitor and replace it by this one. The new electrolytic cap is in place. Now I took out again the voltage regulator board here is the Cena diode this little diode which is in series to the thyristor to, to the gate to trigger the 16 volt here we have the 100 ohm resistor to ground this resistor is okay the 100 ohms to ground checked it this diode I have to take out I cannot measure the threshold voltage I measure 1.2 volt I think it's a little bit too big for a, a Cena diode, it should be in one direction also, 0 0.6 volt, I'm not sure. So I take it out. The diode is out. I connected it to my microampere meter <coughs> and apply a voltage to it in reverse direction, of course, current limited in the range of 100 milliamps or so. When I increase the voltage up to Ten fourteen volt, fifteen volt, nothing happens. And sixteen volt. So this is fifteen volt. No current, nearly no current in sixteen volt. Immediately suddenly we have a current, so the diode is okay. Also in reverse direction, the 0 0.6 volt I have measured. So I will uh, resolder it. No problem with the diode. I replaced these two electrolytic caps. I've checked them before, but they were okay. <coughs> but I replaced them by new ones. These are checked. The pots are checked. This single diode is checked. We have seen the four diodes are checked. So all the components is, which are not checked up to now is this IC and the three, the two transistors and one thyristor here, the semiconductors. But 
it's hard to understand for me what, what is going on because, because they work. They stabilize the output voltage in receive, in transmit mode, in CW mode. The current limitation works, which is done with this IC. So what's the problem between a CW signal and an SSB signal? Or was it just by chance that, that it tripped with an SSB signal? Hmm, don't know. I will bring it back into the power supply and see if we have still the problem pending. Then I have to check whether this thyristor here, I think it is this one, or the big one, the crowbar, uh, is tripped. What is shutting down the PS7? But first I will bring it back into the PS7 and check it. The problem still exists. So I take the next step of escalation. Lucky who has a four channel scope. I connected the four channels to these four points. One, channel one is the output. Channel two is the trigger line gate of this crowbar protection. Line three is the input of this gate for the shutdown of the power supply. And gate four or channel four is the output of the tip 31. For this transistor who drives the output transistors to see whether there is any dip. Channel 1 is a DC output that's 0, 10 volt per division, 12, 13 volt. Channel 2 is nothing, it's a gate of the crowbar. Channel 3 is also nothing, it's ground. And channel 4 is the base of the four power transistors. Of course, there is the same voltage as here. This is theoretically 6.6. 0 0.6 volt uh, above this one, but that's not important. Time is set to 5 milliseconds per division. And when I go to CW, you see this is uh, the voltage of the gate of the four power transistors. Emitter follows this voltage rises a little bit to have constant output voltage. And this means that the um, voltage regulator, the IC, with this IC here, is working because this uh, voltage on the, on the base of the four transistors is increasing a little bit to stabilize the output voltage when we have increased output power. And now I go to single trigger. I use the mode SSB. And I see nothing. Maybe the trigger was set wrong. Okay. That's it. can discuss it. I've re-triggered the signal to have a little bit more on the picture more time. Now we have 10 milliseconds per division. This is output voltage. This is zero line. 10 volt, 13 volt. And it drops down to half and then goes slowly down. This channel here is the uh, gate of the crowbar protection, there is nothing, nothing happens. This is interesting, very interesting. This is a gate of the input, this one. This signal here, channel three, which triggers this circuit. Here's a signal. And four, this is the, the input of the four power transistors on the base. This increases here a little bit. That's, I assume, due to the uh, increasing output power when I speak into the microphone. And here the voltage drops. The output voltage drops also. There is a peak. Don't know why there is a peak. 
it holds the voltage. Same here and then the voltage disappears, disappears here also. Maybe this time constant has something to do with the time constant of this uh, electrolytic cap. I'm not quite sure. But there is a problem, something in here, as I see. Something in here, this 100 microfarad, which, which has 470 microfarad, we have seen. So anyway, here is, is a problem. We can magnify the stored signal and here we see that the voltage at the base of the four power transistors goes down before the thyristor, this thyristor, before this thyristor here is triggered. This pulse, channel 3, is behind channel 4. Channel 4 is first and then channel 3. Channel 3 we have here some, maybe it's capacitive coupling, but the voltage drops and then it is triggered. Also the output voltage. The output voltage drops in parallel with the base voltage, goes down, and then we have a, a now we have, here is it, 500 microseconds, hey, wake up, 500 microseconds, this is 200, 250 microseconds later. That's interesting. Next measurement will be done with this configuration. Channel 1 is the output again. Channel 2 is now connected to the base of this transistor. Channel 3 is still the gate of the thyristor here. And channel 4 is the base of the four power transistors or the emitter of this one. So we have here channel 2 and channel 4, base and emitter of this power transistor. Maybe we have here the problem or inside this uh, integrated circuit, the 723. I will check it and then we can see what we have. And that's the result. Output voltage drops. This here, channel 2, is the base of this transistor. This is channel 2. Channel 3 is the thyristor and channel 4 is the output. Channel 4 is this one. So we see the base of the driver transistor has a higher amplitude of, of this uh, ripple or oscillation than the emitter. Okay, this may be caused by the uh, voltage gain, which is it's an emitter follower. The voltage gain of an emitter follower is less than 1, it is 0 0.9598 or so. It is heavily loaded, so uh, I think it's a problem of the transistor that the gain cannot be 1, but doesn't matter. The source of this oscillation is on the base of the transistor and the emitter is truly the follower, as I understand this uh, scope uh, picture here. So I think we should further investigate the base connection of this uh, transistor. So the problem maybe is here or anywhere in this circuit. For my next test, I move the probe 4, channel 4 from the emitter. I know the problem is obviously not here, <coughs> it's in the base. Move channel 4 to here, to the supply voltage of this circuit and see what's happen what happens here. We have here an, <coughs> an input voltage. This is stable, I've, I've checked it with, with the scope. Same model, channel 4 was here, we have a stable voltage. But here, let's see what we have here when the problem occurs. And here we have the result, channel 4, 2 volt times 10, 20 volt per division, so the voltage is a little bit more than 20 volt. That's the voltage, the voltage here, channel 4. This voltage is stable, 20 volt is sufficient to drive this, these transistors for 13 volt output, so here we have no problem. The supply voltage is constant, as we see. There is nothing, nothing happens, no ripple, no oscillation, so this oscillation only occurs in the output. Uh, that's good enough also. Only occurs here in the output, here we have oscillation, which is channel 2. Nothing, 
clears the trip of the thyristor. Okay, I use it for uh, triggering the scope. Sorry, oscillation, no oscillation, no oscillation. Of course, the output also has oscillation, but the problem seems to be here in this range. Maybe the coupling or filter capacitors here are bad, but these are all ceramic capacitors. I don't think that they are bad. Do we have a problem with the current gain of this transistor? I will check the current gains, make a short calculation what's necessary. But my next step now will be I will simply swap this. Sorry, I'll simply swap this uh, integrated circuit, the voltage regulator, and see what happens. I replaced the 723 by a new one, that's the old one. Let's see whether it's better now. Switched it on to the 13.3 volt are present. A little bit less than 13.8 volt, but that's not the problem in the moment. I disconnected the transceiver. I only use the uh, power switch and the transceiver to switch it on. First I check the voltage, whether it's okay. And then I will connect the transceiver and do the measurement again. And same happens again. It is not the integrated circuit. We have seen that we have here oscillations. The base of this transistor it is not caused by a fault here in, th in these components. The IC is also okay, we swapped it. Could it be a problem with the overcurrent setting that there is a feedback? This could cause oscillations because the overcurrent uh, does not switch off. It only limits the current. Can be seen in the uh, schematic of the MC723. It's only limiting the current, but when the current is limited, the voltage drops and this causes a shutdown via this transistor and this uh, thyristor here. So maybe we have a problem that the uh, overcurrent detection reduces the current, the voltage drops, current drops, the overcurrent uh, says okay, there is no overcurrent, increases the output voltage again, and this causes an oscillation. Time constant is given by these capacitors and these resistors. This could be, uh, as we have seen, in the range of the frequency we had. Hmm. I will try to set up this current setting a little bit to increase the current setting by some amps and see what happens. This is a pot and I turn it to the left side. I've checked it. Left goes into the direction of higher currents. Then I can switch it on. Okay, nothing happens. I can have full output now, but I don't know what the setting is now. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit too high. We had 32 amps. I thought it's sufficient for a 25 amp nominal rating. I don't know what the setting is now. I have to check it. I will do the same procedure again as we had before with the uh, uh, meter and the electronic load. So maybe that problem is simply a setting of the overcurrent protection. Okay, another try. When I go to transmit in full power, 26, I switch on, additional 10 amps, 37, 10 amps, yes, 2699, 37 something, okay, and then I go on next channel. One amp more, two amp, we have 39, 40, 41 amp. I hear the hum of the transformer, 42, that's it. 42 amps, we have a trip. Now we switch both off. And then I try SSB. In the same setting, just to show what's 
going on there. Full power. And no trip, nothing trips. I think it's okay now. The ALC reacts, that's the maximum output for uh, SSB modulation. So we have an, a current limitation of 41, 42 amps. This is sufficient for SSB. The problem are the peaks, not the speech. The medium power of speech is, is nearly zero. I can increase it a little bit with the microphone gain. Nothing happens. I think now we are on the safe side, but we have seen it's a rather difficult uh, setting of the overcurrent protection. And now we are at the end of this project. What happened? A friend of mine brought me a transceiver TR7, said there's a short circuit in it. There was no short circuit. Then he brought me the PS7, and indeed we found that the PS7 trips in mode SSB, not in mode CW. I checked everything, set the overcurrent protection, again we had a trip. The overcurrent protection was set to 35 amps or so, in this, or 32 amps <coughs> in this region, sufficient for nominal current of 25 amps, but it was too low. I did another examinations, found that there is an, a sort of oscillation, this is the feedback of the current limiting loop. There is no fault in any of the components. Swapped everything, which could be uh, suspicious. Electrolytic caps resulted everything. Swapped the voltage regulator, no problems. Nothing happened. Semiconductors were checked. The final solution is the current has to be set to the current limit of the PS7 has to be set to a current of more than 40 amps. To be good for SSB because the peak currents which the TR7 needs, I'm operating in the 80 meter band where the maximum power is generated, 150 watts or so, then we need more than 40 amps peak current uh, to be delivered into the transceiver. Yes, we could use a time delay, but uh, it's not a good idea to use a time delay in an overcurrent protection. So it is more or less a short circuit protection with a current more than 40 amps. This uh, power supply will supply more than 40 amps in the case of a short circuit with this big power transformer. And what was faulty? Nothing. Only the, only the pot was set. The overcurrent protection was set. But it created a lot of work. Maybe I should have seen it earlier. Maybe after a project I'm always a little bit more clever than before the project. Anyhow, stay healthy, stay tuned, see you on this channel.